Hi, everybody. Half past, so we'll get started. Hi, Chong, how are you? I am well, thank you. All good. And what have you done this week? Anything in? Hello. Um, what I said, uh, what have you done? <clears throat> excuse me, what have you done this week? Anything, anything of interest? I've been completing my homework and I've also been designing my folio cover, art folio Ooh. cover. Portfolio, portfolio cover. Portfolio, folio, not portfolio. Oh, it's folio, not no. por portfolio. What's the, di what's the difference? I'm not very sure, but it, it's what we call it. Oh, all right. Well, there you go. Thanks. You taught me now. That's good because I've always just thought it was portfolio, not folio. So I'm going to check now what the difference is. That's really interesting. Thank you. Um, hi, hi, uh, Liu Li Lin. Oh, Lin. Is it Lin? Yeah. Hi, teacher. Hi. Nice to see you. How are you feeling this week? Uh, it's uh, better than last week. You're better than last week. Oh, well, that's good. It's nice to see you. Great. How about you, Eugene? How are you? Hi teacher, I'm well. Oh good, have you done anything interesting this week? Uh, no, but I have some bad news because oh, my dear. classmate, uh, two of my classmates just uh, infected COVID-19. Oh but no. Luckily, I am um, negative oh, and good. I'm feeling well right now. Oh good, well let's hope that continues. Oh, oh dear, yeah, it's not gone yet, has it? Uh, Lynn, sorry, I forgot to ask you the same question. Have you done anything nice this week? Uh, no, as you're just preparing for my assignment. Oh, okay, so busy with that. Great, okay. How about you, Jash Jashria? How are you? I'm fine, teacher, thank you. All good. And have you done anything interesting this week? Uh, I celebrated my mother's birthday today. Oh, that's good. What did you do to celebrate? Um, we went to a restaurant for afternoon tea. Yeah. Oh, very. Oh, afternoon tea. Very nice. What did you have for afternoon tea? We had pastries. Mm -hmm. um, we had some tea. Mm, um, very nice. Um, um, tea. Um, I forgot the name. I can't pronounce it. It's really um, weird. Is it so Darjeeling? Uh, yeah, something like that, a kind of confusing name. Okay. <laughs> Wonder what it is. Yeah. Oh, sounds great. I love afternoon tea. Yeah, I went swimming yesterday. Oh, very nice. Well, you've been busy. Great. Um, Jashri, are you able to put your camera on? Uh, unfortunately, it's not working, teacher. I have no oh, idea. Oh, no. Okay, well, never mind. Let's hope it works next time. How about you, Henry? How are you? Hi, teacher. Um, I'm fine. All good. Um... And uh, you weren't here last week, Henry, were you? Uh, I wasn't here uh, last week. Oh, so you haven't met me that yet then. I'm Hayley. Um, so I know you've um, been told about your, your usual teacher, so I'm covering. Um, anyway, nice to meet you, Henry. Um, were you, are you okay? Were you unwell last week? Uh, I was busy last week, so I, I couldn't attend class. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad you're back. And have you done anything interesting this week? Uh, I've been uh, studying at home and also doing my homework. Yeah, well done. Well, you're all very busy people. And probably it's the age for it, isn't it? There's lots of lots going on. I remember being at secondary school and wow, there's a lot to do, isn't there? Um, hi, Danny Ashri. Hi, teacher. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. All good. And have you done anything interesting this week? Not really. I've just been studying and completing my homework as usual. Yeah, oh, well done. Well, that's good, isn't it? Working hard, keeping up the routine. That's always good. Danny Ashri, are you able to put your camera on today? Hey, just one second, teacher. Great. Okay, so I think we've got most people um, haven't got calcium this week. Um, there's a couple of people on the list that aren't here, but hopefully they will appear. Um, so before we start, just to say that, obviously I'm covering your lessons, but next week it won't be me because I can't do next week. Um, so you're going to have a different 
um cover tutor next week but then it will be me again the week after the 25th of july um and on that that date the 25th of july uh, we're going to do an assessment and also on the 1st of august so there'll be a, an assessment test paper 25th of july and the test actually um so very important to try and study as much as you can for that um have you done a mock have you, have you done a, a one before already yeah some nodding okay well it's a great chance really to see because you're nearly at the end of your course now so to see how you're doing in terms of the exams and any final practice that you can be doing um so let's get started though anyway we're on the note of practicing we better get going uh just got to find where i've put our slides hold on a second so um oh what have i done here they are great we're going to start with a quick um recap sorry i was going to turn this fan off because it's giving me a sore throat <clears throat> um a quick recap of uh what we did last week and then we're going to be continuing unit 12 the animal kingdom today um, so let's see if you can remember from last week what are each of the conditionals so we went through the first the first conditional second conditional third conditional and mixed conditional so let's see if you if you can remember it so hands up or just you can just unmute actually if you can remember how we um, use the first conditional so maybe you could give an example or you could explain the structure any ideas who can remember it was the most simple one that we we started with at the, right at the beginning but we didn't do it in the workbook actually so it might not be as easy to remember so i'll give you a clue it starts with if Uh, if it rains, we will study at home. Yeah, great. Well done. So you've got if uh, it rains, so the present, simple present, and then the simple future, we will study at home. Great idea, Chong. Well done. Great example. Sorry. Very good. Um, if I wake up late, I will miss the bus. If I study, I will do well in the mock exam and so on. So it's quite a simple one for that one okay so how do we use the um second conditional so again it starts with if but it changes slightly this one we did practice in the workbook so you could have a little look back If Titanic missed the iceberg, the passengers would have survived. If the Titanic had missed the iceberg, the passengers would have survived. Um, yes, well done. Good. Makes me think that sometimes these. Uh, so you've got if plus the past simple. Uh, oh, although you said had missed actually, didn't you? Uh, did yeah. you say had missed yeah so that's that's actually using the third conditional with had um so you could just say if the titanic missed the um iceberg what was the re rest of the sentence eugene sorry if the titanic missed the iceberg the mm -hmm. passengers would have survived yeah i think the one you're thinking of is the third conditional um where you have the auxiliary verb to have is the third conditional we might as well look at it now while we're on it um so if uh yeah if the titanic had missed the iceberg they would have survived that's when you've got past perfect with had or have and then would and wouldn't plus have but that's good we've recapped that one now <laughs> um so here are a couple more examples. If I had got a gold medal, I would have been happy. If I had met Susan last week, I would have been given, ooh, what's it going to be? I don't know. It cuts it off. I would have been given a gift, maybe. Um, so then the second conditional, we might as well just have a look at it. 
um, is very similar, isn't it? We've got if plus the past simple plus um, followed by the present conditional. So we have to use were in this case or was. So if I won a million dollars, I would buy a new car. If I were you, so we can, we can think of a hypothetical situation, I would quit smoking. If I were you, I would stop doing that. So it can be used in that way as well with were. So then finally, we had the mixed conditional. Who can remember? We did that one right at the end and we were going to think of a sentence to do with our lives um, at the moment. So how do we use the mixed conditional? Just unmute if you can remember. It does start with if again. Remember though, you can change where the if goes. It could go in the middle. So like these examples, I would buy a new car if I won a million dollars. I would quit smoking if I were you. So you can switch the two clauses around. Mixed conditional. So it's a mixture of the third and second conditional. See if you can remember how to put it together. So my example um, that I gave at the end of the class last week was I would not be teaching on this platform if I had not seen the advert online. So this was relating to real life, things that would have happened um, to us differently. So it's something in the um, present that was affected by the past. You could switch it round. If I had not seen the advert online, I would not be teaching on this platform. So I left you all with a little thinking question or a little thing to think about, task to think about, um, of coming up with one of your own. So a true one, something that's um, happening in the present as a result of something in the past. So you've got the... Can I try? Yep, go for it. I would be preparing for my exam if I were you. Oh, well done. But that one is the um, second conditional. I would prepare for my exam if, uh, if I were you. Yeah. So good example of the second. Now, you could try and use that to think of something in the present that was affected by the past. So you could think, OK, I would not be at my school now if I hadn't studied, if I had not studied for the entrance exam, I don't know if anybody had to do an entrance, entrance exam. Is that what anybody had to do? Some nodding. Okay. So there's a good sentence for you using mixed conditionals. I would not be at my school now if I had not studied for the entrance exam. Can we think of another one? Maybe you could do one similar to mine. Would you be doing these online lessons if you had not seen, I don't know, a pro promotion for it? Teacher, can I try? Yeah, great. Go for it, Lynn. I would be happier if I had bought a new phone. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you could do it that way around. So something you're not feeling now as a result of the past. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, well done, Lynn. Anybody else want to have a go? There are some more examples here um, of the mixed conditional. Oh, there's the third, sorry. So if I had listened to your advice, I wouldn't be in this mess. If he had checked the map, he wouldn't be lost. If I had gone to university, I would be a doctor now. If uh, so, uh, Eugene, you could say something like, "If the if the students in my class hadn't tested positive, I would still be going to school now." I don't know. Are you having to isolate? If my friend hadn't got COVID nineteen, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. would be talking to him right now. 
there you go great well done exactly really good example there great well well done is anybody like any last people there want to have a go henry you weren't here last week are you, how are you feeling are you thinking what on earth is all this or are you feeling like you've got you've uh, caught up from this quick review uh, i'm still trying to figure it out still trying to figure it out but well, that's fair enough because it did take us all lesson last week so it would be worth we're not going to spend more time on it now but it'd be definitely worth you studying this definitely before the mock exam so you could watch the uh, video back of the lesson last week but there's also further information on the page 165 i think it's page 165 just remembered that from last week randomly and um definitely try and catch up on the exercises in your book and you can always send me those answers um, so I can check them for you, that's fine. So let's move on though to today's learning, which is going to be um, looking at page, what page are we on here? 132, Next, the following one from where we got to last week. And it's going, we're going to start by focusing on reading and our use of English. So it's going to all be focused on um, thinking about a circus. Be reading a short article by someone. Um, but before we start reading, we're going to do these discussion questions, but also just get used to the idea of a circus. We might not know really what it is yet. I don't know. Put your hands up um, if you're not sure. Or let's let's see. Actually, first of all, who has who has been to a circus? Hands up if you have. Or you can nod or shake your heads. <laughs> Some signal. No? Okay. I haven't either, actually. Oh, sort of. A circus came to my school once, actually. They set up on the field. It was great. Um, so I, I guess I have been to a circus, actually. But I haven't gone somewhere else to go to the circus. There are travelling ones that can come and set up um, if they've got enough space. So I had a feeling that was the case because circuses aren't all that popular, really, anymore, I wouldn't say. I think most people tend to go to other events usually so i thought we could spend some time before we do the work in our book um having a look at some circus videos seeing what it's all about and um reading about a very famous circus group called the cirque de soleil Does anyone, has anybody heard of those no oh right well, well we'll read all about it in a minute so here's a little overview of um a circus we might not watch all of this video just get the idea of what it is Roll up. Cool. And the other thing we're going to be thinking about is how they've changed over time. Circuses today are quite different to how they were in the past. So watch out for some things in the video here that perhaps we don't see today. Roll up. Buy your tickets here. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, lads and lasses, step right up. <laughs> the show's about to begin. The smells of candy floss, ice cream, popcorn and hot dogs fill the evening air. Expectation and suspense encircle the crowd as we take our seats. The band begins to play, the lights go down and the ringmaster enters. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to our little show, the greatest show on earth. We invite you today to feast your wondering eyes on the extraordinary grandeur of our most delightful spectacle. To be amazed at our... So spectacle, meaning this amazing thing to see. Now, one of the things that has changed in circuses today is in the video now. Hands up any, if, if you've got any ideas of what that could be. Something that we can see now that are not allowed in today's circuses. Any ideas? Animals. Yeah, well done, Chong. Very good. So there's been, I think, so uh, circuses were quite controversial, really. There was something going on in circuses people disagreed with like animals they were getting really tired having to travel around with the circus um to be on show and have people watch them it's you know it's not very nice for them so 
yeah, there was then a, a law that they they can't be in circuses anymore. Um, there were other. There was another thing that changed as well. And to gaze in awe upon each of our animals in their full majestic and altogether natural regalia, we bring for you the world's funniest collection of clowns, the most incredible fire jugglers, exciting, death-defying artists of the high wire, mm. acrobats. Exquisitely beautiful ballet dance. So this sort of stuff uh, does still go on. Lots of interesting um, acts like the the unicycle, the acrobats, and so on. And the world's most exotic, fearsome, wild animals. It is a truly spectacular show we have for you tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Now strike up the band, for the circus is about to begin. Woo. Okay, so we'll stop that one there. So hopefully you get the idea now of what the circus uh, is like or was like back in um, the past as well. Uh, but as Chong said, there are no animals anymore. Um, and so a big part of changing the circus and making it more um, kind, really, I suppose, to animals and people, because some people were in the circus who didn't want to be. Maybe if they looked a bit different to how other people look, they may have been chosen to be in a circus so that people could look at them, um, which is, you know, really horrible now when you when you think about, um, you know, how um, happy we are to celebrate diversity these days. Uh, so we're going to have a read of this about the Cirque du Soleil. And this is a very famous circus company. So Chong, do you want to start reading this one off? Is that okay? Sure. Cirque du Soleil is a Montreal-based entertainment company which has become world-renowned for the quality of its performances. Several okay. permanent... Uh, yeah, keep going, sorry. Several permanent Cirque du Soleil shows can be found in locations in like Las Vegas, Tokyo, and Macau, and the company also has several touring performances offering shows scattered across corners of the globe. As of 2008, over 700 million people wow. had seen a Cirque du Soleil performance and the company had one of the most recognizable brand names in the world. Great reading, Chung. Well done. Yes, yeah, so 700 million people. That's a, that is a lot of people that had seen one. This is just how popular Cirque du Soleil are. Um, so let's read a little bit more about Cirque du Soleil and then we'll have a look at um, one of their shows as well. So Lynn, can you carry on reading, please? The, the company was established in 1984 by two street performers who wanted to revolutionize the nature of circus performance. Okay, Revolution. stop there a second. Revolutionize. Revolutionize. That's it. And what does revolutionize mean? They wanted to revolutionize the nature of circus performance. What does that mean? Uh, to change. Change it. Good. But change it quite dramatically. If you revolutionize something, it's like you're kind of, yeah, you're changing it almost completely. You're, you're making it new and different and uh, improving it. Yes. Okay. Keep going then, Lynn. From the start. So this light performance used no animals has uh, sorry had no central ring and blended a variety of circus art from all over the world. Performers from a variety of traditions participate in Sir de Soleil Solite performances. Sir de Soleil, yeah. De Soleil performances with each performance performance telling a story through costumes, music, and various stage scenes great lovely reading well done so it's Cirque du Soleil everybody it's a it's a French um, name think of your yeah. French don't if you've studied uh, French I won't off. be turning on my um, camera because there's something wrong with my webcam oh oh dear okay Eugene all right good job I saw you when I did okay um, Henry you can carry on reading uh, in French Cirque du Soleil means circus of the sun and it is widely considered a modern or new circus. Thanks to the innovative techniques used in circuit 
his sub performances. Performers mm-hmm. typically handle their own props and stage setting. For example, and curtains are not used to obscure the workings of the circus from the crowd. With scene changes being integrated into the story rather than hidden. In addition to ref- refusing refusing to use animals for entertainment, the company prides itself on its corporate citizenship, participating in a variety of programs designed to support local communities and improve the environment. Right. Wow. So not only are they uh, have they improved the conditions for the people in the circus and stopped using animals, but yes, they're they're making it like a community um, project. It's great. So what does the word innovative mean? They use innovative techniques. What does that mean? Any ideas? Sure. It means new. New. Yep. But not just new, it's more kind of creative, being new and creative. Um, so it's like you're coming up with a, yeah, brand new ways of doing things. So maybe if you've always done something a certain way in a company and then somebody comes in and starts doing it a different way, you might say that they're quite innovative. They think of creative new ideas. So before we do the work in the workbook, I thought we could to also see some of these amazing Cirque du Soleil acts that 700 million people have seen. Well, more than that now, because this was written a while ago. Um, so let's have a look and see how it's changed now. So that's one of the innovative ways of changing the, the staging. It's coming up from the floor. goes on and they add more and more and do more and more and things uh, so he's one particular act but you can search on youtube there's many many more um wonderful performances that go on uh, maybe we'll look at one at the end as well um so who's been inspired to go and watch it who's going to join the the other 700 million people i've never seen it a show actually i think i might like to go and see one if it's if it was around anyone been inspired to to be in this in this in the show you never know. All right. Well, let's have a look at your workbook now then. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed seeing those video- videos and learning a bit more about the circus. So hopefully that should help, help as well with the next part of your work. So before doing the reading, you're going to answer the questions in the exam roundup box. So this is going to help you to remember what exactly you have to do in the reading part of the exam. Uh, so See if you can use all of the phrases, uh, so these words and phrases here, um, to fill in questions one to six. So everybody have a go, see how much you can remember about the reading exam. So there are 17 questions in this part. You must choose A, B, C, or D. Obviously there's only, there's, there's only one number in this, so uh, it's gotta be that one. So I'll give you a few minutes to do it. Um, Just write that you finished in the chat box.
Okay, great. People are starting to finish. Very good. Um, so, who haven't we heard from much today? Danny Ashry, can you read out the answers, please? And I'll say, tell you if you're right. Number one is eight, uh, like you said mm -hmm. just now. Uh, number two is the text quickly. Yep. Number, good. number three, after. Yep. Number four, the options. Yep. Number five, you have finished. Yep. And number six, all the questions. Very good. Well done. So they're good little reminders there for what you're going to be expected to do. Very good, Danny Ashri. Well done. Okay, so hopefully you've got the same answers as well, everyone. If not, just switch those over. No problem, as long as we know now. Um, so then we're going to move on to the article. So I'm sure you've done exercises like this before, but we're going to read it and just read it quickly without paying attention to the gaps. So we're just going to skim over the gaps to begin with. Um, and we're going to think about what animals uh, Nell and Toti have in their circus. So, um, Henry, you read, didn't you? Uh, Eugene, you can read the first part of this, please. Let's just do the first few together. My sister and brother-in-law, Nell and Toti, own a circus. It is called... Mm -hmm. It is... Yeah, called mm -hmm. Different Circus. And it tours some of the loveliest part of Southwest, Southwest England. Very good. Well done. It is called... Gifford Circus, good. So you can either do it that way, like Eugene did, and try and figure it out as you read, or you can read the whole thing to get an idea first, and then go back and read it one more time and put in the options. But be careful, because there are some where there's quite similar meanings here. Um, like named, titled, but we wouldn't say titled. Titles for a text, isn't it? Um, it's named for a person. So called. Yeah, Gifford Circus. So continue reading that and do the same thing again. So keep going through and seeing uh, where which words need to go into the gaps. And then, like we did before, we'll read the whole thing together and check uh, your answers. But if you want to ask any questions, obviously just unmute and go for it. So about, let's say about five minutes we should uh, be done but just write when you finished in the chat box. Wow, you're all very fast. People have started to say they finished already. Very good. Okay, so we'll just give it a minute for everyone to finish off. If you haven't already, well done if you have. Very good, Lynn, Chong and Eugene. Great, that was very quick. So you could be spending time just double checking those while we're waiting for everyone to finish. Well done, Henry. Great, okay, I think everyone has finished. Yep, there we go, Danny Ashri, great, well done. So we'll go through, I'll just pick um, people to read out the next part and we'll double check if you're right. So carry on reading please, um, Chong from here. Circuses have always... Circuses have always been a part of Nell's life, even when we were children. When she met Tati, she had already worked in several circuses in Britain and Europe. Uh, yep, yeah, right. When she met Toti, she had already worked in several circuses in Britain and Europe. Very good. Right, so two should be C, three should be D. Carry on, please, Lynn. Can I start it? Are we starting? 
Miss Dutch, what she really desired for was a circle of her own. Uh, what she really, say that again, sorry. Desired. Um, what she really desired, uh, that does sort of work. What she really desired was, what she re really desired for was a circus of her own. Now we can't use desired because you don't say you desire for something. You just desire something. So if it said, but what she really desired was a circus of her own, that would work. But I'm afraid it doesn't work, um, Lynn, because we have got the word for there. So do you want to have another go? Do you know which, one it, which other one it could be? Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, let's see if somebody else can answer. Good effort there, though, Lynn. Um, unmute, please, if you think you know which one it is instead of desired. Oh, did lots of people put desired. Hands up if you also put desired. Okay, is it wanted? I just long. Longed. Okay, good. So well done, Danny Astri, for trying that one as well. I think that was like Danny Astri or did Jeshri just unmute? So I've lost track of whose voice that was there. Well, uh, but it's Danny longed. Astri, oh, it was. Yeah, good. Um, she longed for a circus of her own. You can long for something. You can't wanted for something. So you've got to watch out for these other little words in here that will then change the use of the other words, the possibility to use the other words. So she longed for a circus of her own. We're going to be looking at the words longed for, hoped for, wished for in the next part of the lesson. So don't worry too much if you're not sure about that at the moment. Um, Henry, can you carry on reading from here? If the word... If the word circus reminds you of clowns and lions, think again. Yep, good. Well done. That's right. Keep going, please, Danny Astri. The show is based on traditional traveling circuses and aimed at a rural audience. Yeah, well done. Very good. Okay, great. Um, Last bit then, please, um, Eugene. Oh, just read the last bit. There were no wild animals, but horses play a leading role in performances, which are a mixture of theater, dance, traditional circus acts, and clowns. I had visited now at the circus a lot. But this time I was going to spend the summer there. Good. Well done. It is spend. Great. Well done, everyone. Good joint effort. So I think the main one then to work on is this uh, one that we've got stuck on number four. Uh, like I said, we're, go we're going to have a look at that during this lesson, actually. So don't worry if you weren't sure. Um, we'll have a look at when we do have four with the word and when we don't. Um, but we'll move on for now. So. Um, what I want you to do is we're going to have a quick um, think about why we either should or shouldn't have animals in the circus. So I'm going to divide you into two groups um, and you can think about whether you are for or um, you're going to be given sorry for or against and you can write your you can just write your answers actually in the chat box and then we'll have a go at um, having a bit of a, a debate between us. So, Chong, Lin and Henry, I'm just doing it along the cameras, you're going to be against animals being in the circus. So you can think of reasons why you might be against and you can write them in the chat box. So it could be, well, think of the first reason. Why, why do you think animals should not be in the circus, Chong? Because it's animal abuse, because they use whips to train the animals. Right, okay, yes. They're, um, so you could say they're poorly treated. Yeah, you can, use, you can say uh, animal, it's animal, animal abuse as well, yeah. Uh, okay, so you're going to be writing why you're against it. So then Danny Ashtree, Eugene and Jashria. This, is one, this one's hard, isn't it? Because if you are 
if you believe the opposite, it's quite hard to come up with reasons, but you can either say why you think they should be in the circus or why some people might think they should be in the circus. So for example, somebody might say that it's good for um, the people who come and watch the shows to see a range of animals. Maybe they'll say children might not see these animals unless they go and see them in the circus, for example. So let's spend about two minutes coming up with reasons in the chat box. You could start it with a note of whether you're for or against as well, so we can remember who's who. And you can just write it to everybody in there. Oh, well done, Danny Asri. Very good. Yeah, so you could go on the financial side of things. It's going to generate more money for the tourism and the circus. Good idea. Hopefully you're all typing away. I haven't seen many others in there yet. Oh, here we go. Thank you, Jashreer. Yeah, great. Well done, Jashreer. Oh, interesting view there, Eugene. Yeah, well done. Okay, one, one more minute to finish uh, thinking about your ideas. Well done, Chong. Okay, so uh, I think that's everybody. One, two, three, four, five, maybe not. One, two, three, four, five six seven okay um so just finish off those if you haven't already but pick your hand if you have um had a debate before and argued your points politely with each other who's done that before maybe you've done it in this class before i don't know some people are shaking heads okay well we'll, we'll have a little go so if somebody is feeling uh brave enough they can start you can use your own ideas you could you could you could um follow up with somebody else's idea that's in the chat box they're there to help everybody so you could um so you you can uh frame your opinion by using words like i believe or you could say have you considered you might want to ask people what they think about it have you considered the fact that animals are um, trained using whips do you want all of these animals to go through this terrible treatment and that then somebody else might come back and say, however, I see your point. However, animals will attract more people to come to the circuses and so on. OK, so you can have a go between you all. At, this is going to be a great chance to practice your speaking, your persuasive speaker, speaking skills um, and, and your confidence as well. It takes a bit of confidence to um, take part in a debate. So let's see how we get on. Maybe somebody is feeling brave enough to just unmute and start the discussion. You don't have to come up with new things necessarily. It can be the, the things in the chat box. Who's going to go for it? I think. Um... Um, we know that some in some circuses, uh, animals were trained using whips and being abused. But in most big circuses, they they usually don't do that. They just train with uh, they just train them properly instead of using um, instead of um, beating them violently and treating them bad and they actually got decent uh, food like they feed them with meats 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think the government this can be improved by uh the government. They can um make a law against animal abuse and forcing all the circuses um to to treat the animals better. If they don't, they are not allowed to have animals in their circus. Right. Okay, Eugene. Good idea. So, are you making a suggestion that that's what they should do? So maybe you could say if, um, if they don't, that they shouldn't have animals in the circus. Or, I believe, you could finish with your main point because they were really good ideas. But I think sometimes a really good way of ending your point is by reinforcing your the main thing you want to say. So, what was the main thing you wanted to say, Eugene? Was it about the laws? Yeah. It's about right, so, so you could finish with, therefore, I think all circuses, or therefore, I think there should be a law and do it that way. So just try that again, Eugene, with that final point. What's your final point? Off you go. I think there should be a law to um, force all circuses to treat their animals well. Good. Yeah, they, good. Well done. Good final don't, point there. They shouldn't cool. have animals in their circus yep great okay um you you don't even necessarily need if they don't because we kind of know that that's what you're getting at by there being a law but that was really really loads of good points there eugene well done so now it's time for someone to step in and say uh that's a good idea eugene but i don't think animals should ever be used in a circus or whatever you want to add to it see if you can think of something to come back to Eugene with. Sometimes it's hard to think on the spot, isn't it? But the, the more you practice, the better you'll get at just coming back with answers. And then before we know it, we're all going to be unmuting at the same time. Can't wait to, to say our thing, our piece. So I'm going to say something then in that case. Um, and the rest of you can be thinking. So that was a really good point, Eugene. But even if the animals are treated well, have you considered the fact that animals should just be in their natural environment? Do you really think animals want to be um, toured around and shown off, even if they are treated well while they're there? So you could come back, Eugene, with something else or somebody else could step in. I think we'll have a little bit of practice with our debating skills. <laughs> so this would, so, so, so to what I just said, Danny Ashry, your point in the chat box would be a really good one to come back at me with that. Yes, teacher, actually, um, it does. And anyways, uh, not all people, uh, not all owners, I would say, uh, treat animals very badly. Sometimes they also bring the animals out to get, um, to graze on the grass or to get some fresh air and, you know, just out of the industry of, um, you know, entertaining. Oh, great. Oh, so they get regular breaks. I see. Really good point there, Danny Ashri. Well done. Okay. So let's see. Can anybody add something else to that? So maybe what the ministry said was true, but through the research, um, the animals will be keeping in the cage after they just perform, finish their performance. So uh, through the animals' Asian investigation, uh, the Vietnam Circus has found that 100% of facility fail to meet the animal basic needs. So I think that um, the animals shouldn't be kept in the circus. Wow. Did you do a bit of research, Lynn? Yeah. Oh, wow, really good. Well done. Well done for bringing your research in. What was it? 100% who, who found that fact? That was really good. Animal station. Mm, wow. So 100% were not tra- treated fairly. Is that right? Yeah, in Vietnam. Wow. Well done. Great fact finding there because adding research to your um, debates and your points really helps to back it up doesn't it and makes everyone think whoa okay this is definitely sounding uh believable here this is definitely sounding like we need to take this 
opinion. That was great, Lynn. Well done. Okay, so last chance, and we'll move on. We're going to move on after this. Any other points to add, anybody? Anyone who's not had a go yet? All right, well, you did a great first um, try with that. Maybe if we um, debate again, now that we've had a practice, uh, you'll get the idea a bit more. We'll keep doing a little bit of practice because it's a really good way of practicing your speaking skills because I think sometimes people are focusing on what, they're, what you're going to say, which is, which is great, but then we sometimes forget to actually listen. And with a debate, you've really got to listen to what's going on so you can come straight back at that point that somebody's said rather than you know taking turns to say something or say a speech where you're not necessarily having to then change it you've got it prepared so it's a good way of thinking on the spot coming up with opinions sharing your opinion making your point um, so we'll keep practicing that but well done good good points there and even if you didn't uh, say your point you had some really good ones in the chat box so well done everyone so we'll move on and we're going to look at the grammar exercise now um, on the next page and that is that we're going to look at wish, if only, and hope. But we can bring in long for and wanted as well, like we saw on the last pages. Um, so I think what we will do, um, we'll start with exercise one, actually, and then we'll go and have a look at um, some more information. But we'll just get the idea of it first of all. So let's read these sentences, A to F, and then you're going to answer questions one to eight below. So read um, A, please, Chong. My aunt has a white cat, and I wish I had one too. Good. B, please, Lynn. I wish that the next door wouldn't bark, especially at night. Good. C, please, Henry. I wish it had made some kind of scratch on my skin to show my friends. Okay, Danny Ashri, D, please. If only I was back in Italy. Great. Uh, Eugene E. We get quite a variety of birds at this time of year. I always hope the cats don't get them. Good. And then F, please, Jashria. I hope you enjoy your holiday and have good weather. Brilliant. So there we have some examples of I hope, I wish, if only. Um, we're going to answer these questions and then we'll take a break. And after the break, we'll, we'll study a bit more as to how we use these. But let's see if we can get an initial idea, first of all, before we go to our break. So in which sentences is the speaker talking about something in the present tense? So it might be more than one, obviously, because it says in which sentences. Any ideas? E. E is in the present. Good. There's another one as well. There's another three, actually. What's that, Chong? Oh, what was that one? A. Uh, A, I think. Did you say? F. Oh, not F. Um, no, that's really talking about something that's going to happen in the future. Although we can't see will, but it is talking about your holiday that's coming up. Uh, but it is A, so it's at A. Uh, my aunt has a white cat. That's in the present. Any others? There's two more. Teacher D. D, very good. If only I was back in Italy. That's how you feel now in the present. And um, E is the other one. We get quite a variety of birds at this time of year. I always hope it's talking about the present. So in which three sentences is the speaker saying he or she would like the present situation to be different? E. D, good. If only I was back in Italy. Yeah, we want to be back there. We want the present to be different. We don't want to be where we are. We want to be in Italy. Um, that, that, next one. B. B, good, yes. I wish the dog next door wouldn't bark, especially at night. Exactly, we want something to be different. Um, last one. A. A, good, yeah, exactly. I wish I had one too. We want something to be different. We want to have a cat. So in which sentence is the speaker complaining about an activity that was annoying? This time it's just one sentence. B. 
B, very good, well done. Um, what tenses are possible after wish and if only when referring to the present time? B. E. Um, so it's, this time it's not talking about a sentence, it's talking about which tense, but you could look at um, the sentences that have that. So after wish and if only, so let's have a look. If only, what's it followed by? I was back in Italy. What tense is that? Was. So what tense is it? Yeah, good. Past continuous tense. Uh, it's the past simple, past simple tense. Good try there, Danny Ashley. Well done. Uh, it's the past tense. So it's either that or you can have would plus the infinitive as well. So, um, oh, lost where it is now. I wish the dog next door would or wouldn't bark, especially at night. So wish and would or wouldn't. All right, nearly there. Well done. Let's see. Um, so in which sentence is the speaker talking about something which has happened in the past? C. Great, well done. Uh, which sentence, sorry, what tense is used after wish and if only when referring to the past tense, sorry, when referring to the past time? Really, I was back in Italy. That one we're going to study a bit more, actually. That one's a bit more challenging. Uh, but it is that you need to use the past perfect. But I think rather than doing this in our quick run through, we'll have a look at that one in a minute. Uh, in which sentence is the speaker talking about something in the future? F. Very good. Well done. Last one. Uh, what tense can be used with the verb after hope when we talk about the future? So I hope. What tense is the rest of it? Is it present tense? Pre uh, present simple, yeah, very good. Well done, Lynn. Great. So that's giving us, given us a quick idea of how we use those three um, words or phrases, wish, if only, and hope. When we come back after the break, we're going to study it in a bit more detail and we're going to try and do some more exercises using those. But I think we'll take a well-deserved break. Well done, everybody. Um, we'll take 15 minutes. So I will see you all after the break. All right, bye bye. Okay, cameras and mics, well not mics, but cameras back on everybody please. Let's get started. Hope you had a good break. Great, okay, so we are going to continue with what we started looking at just before the break, which was the use of uh, wish, if only, and hope. So we're going to be moving on to um, task two, but before we do, let's all turn to page 180 because on there, there is some more information about using these um, phrases. So let's have a look. Turn to 180. And we should be able to find it on there. So wish, if only, and hope. Here's all of the information we need to know. So it's quite a lot here. We'll take it in turns to read. So uh, Chong, can you start us off, please? Read the first chunk of information here. We use wish if only plus past simple to say we would like a present situation to be different. I wish I had a warmer jacket. This one doesn't keep me warm. If only it was the summer holidays, but it isn't. I'm still at school. 
Note, this use of wish, if only, is similar to second conditional. It uses a past tense to refer to something which is contrary to the fact in the present. Yep, good. Okay. So it's, it's saying something isn't really something but uh, in the present. So if only, I, yeah, exactly. If only it was the summer holidays, it's not, is it? So it's a bit similar to the second conditional. Yeah. Well done, Chong. So we use wish if only plus would to say um, we want something to happen. So I wish my car would start in brackets I can't make it start and I want it to start but, but this is what the person infers from you saying that we want someone to start doing something they don't do so if only you'd listen to me it's like the same as saying I wish you would listen to me but it's a bit more ex usually a bit more exasperated Ugh, I wish if only you'd listen to me if only I had a car and I didn't have to walk all this way or if only I could get a bus um, or we can use it when we want someone to stop doing something which annoys us. If only my mum wouldn't phone me every five minutes. If only my dog wouldn't bark in the middle of the night. Can anybody think of another example like one of these? So either for I wish or if only. Just unmute. It could be true. If only my little brother wouldn't cry in the middle of the night. There you go. Great. Thank you. Good example. Hope he stops soon. Any others? If only the rain would stop today. Good. Is it raining there, Chong? No. No, making it up. That's fine. Um, great. Okay. Good examples. Well done. So carry on reading, please, Lynn. Read this chunk for us here. Oh, not that much. This one. We use wish if only plus past perfect to talk about things which we are unhappy about which have burned in the past. He wishes he had studied harder when he was at school. He didn't study hard enough. Perhaps if he had studied harder, if he would have gone to university. Great. Well done. This is all of the information we can get just from somebody saying he wishes he had studied harder when he was at school we don't have to say the rest we can infer it meaning we can guess the rest so note this use of wish if only is similar to the third conditional so it uses the past perfect tense to refer to something which is contrary to the facts in the past so if only means i wish when talking about other people um so when talking about other people we we use he wishes, they wish, etc. We use if only when we feel something very strongly, like I said, we maybe we feel a bit exasperated. Otherwise, we use I wish. Okay, so let's try and use uh, hope now. So, uh, Jashria, you can read this part for us, please. Use hope when we want something to happen or to be true and usually have a good reason to think that it might. I hope you have a good holiday. She hopes her students will get a, get a high grade in her exams. Note, we use hope plus present slash um, future present, tense. future yeah. tense, yeah. With a future meaning, especially when the subject of the two clouds is different. Mm -hmm. So, i.e., I and you. In I hope uh, you have a great, a good holiday. We often use hope plus infinitive when there is only one subject in a sentence. He hopes, Very good. He hopes to go into politics in the future. He hopes he'll go into politics in the future. We can use hope when we want something to be true about the past, but we don't know if it's true. I hope you had a good flight, but I don't know if you had a good flight. Good, well done. So the brackets, remember, is why we are saying it, what we, can, what we get from saying that. So, yeah, when we want something to happen. 
So I hope it is sunny next week. I hope um, you all had a good break. We can stay up for something we want to happen in the future or something that we hope has happened in the past. So who can give another example? I hope you have all understood the grammar rule. That could be another one. Can I try? Go for it. I hope to go to London in the future. Yeah, good. Well done. I hope I hope to go to London in the future. Great. Or I hope I can go to London in the future. Or I hope to visit London in the future. Let's go with that one. Third time lucky. I hope to visit London in the future. Good. Okay. Yeah, you'll be able to use your super English then. Um, not that you don't get to use it already, but you'll be able to use it even more. Any other examples? So you could use Danny Asri's idea and think about something you might like to do in the future. I hope I won't be exhausted next week. Yeah, good. Okay. I hope I won't be exhausted next week. I hope I won't be too exhausted next week. Great. Um, brilliant. So before we do the exercise then, there's this really useful flow chart here. So if you're wondering whether to use wish or hope, you can go through these options. So is it optimistic about something? If you're being optimistic, you are hopeful about the future. So in which case you use hope. So I hope the weather will improve so we can go fishing this afternoon. You're optimistic about the future. If you are pessimistic about something happening or sure it won't happen, use wish. So I wish I lived in London. She wishes she had more money. I wish you wouldn't play such loud music. He wishes his daughter would come home earlier. I wish I hadn't eaten so much cake. I'm feeling sick. She wished she'd gone to university. All things that might have happened in the past that we wish we hadn't have done and we wish were different. So hopefully that's given you a good idea now um, of how we use that. So we'll go back to page, I can't remember what we were on now, 130 something, was it? Uh, 133 there you go and hopefully now with the help of that flow chart as well you can read these sentences and decide when wish is used correctly and when you should use hope so if you think a sentence is correct you'll write correct if you think it is wrong you'll cross out what is wrong and you'll correct it so have a look through it was lovely seeing you and I wish to see you all again very soon in my house. Are we going to write correct? Lynn, what do you think? Is it correct? Um, it's not correct, well done. What do we need to change? Uh, change the wish into hope. Very good. Why do we have to change it to hope? Uh, because hope is used in a optimistic situation. It, it's what, sorry? Uh, sorry. Optimistic. Uh, it's optimistic. Yes, very good. Well done. Good. You got it. So everybody carry on. Um, again, tell me when you finished and we'll go through the answers. Great, okay, looks like most of you have finished. Well done. Okay, so let's go through. Um, so 
Danny Ashri, number two, read it out. Say if you think it's correct or incorrect. Going to the theme park together was great and I wish you enjoyed the experience. It's wrong. It's supposed to be hope. Yeah, well done. It is supposed to be hope. Very good. Next one, please, Chong. I wish I visited you last summer when I had the chance. I think it's wrong. It should be if only I visited. Um, you can say that as well, but it is correct. It depends how much you want to stress the point. So this one you can say, it's perfectly fine. I wish I'd visited you last summer when I had the chance. But if you were really thinking, what a mistake, I should have gone last summer when I had the chance. In that case, you'd say, oh, if only I'd visited you last summer when I had the chance. So either are fine. Um, Eugene, number four, please. I'm looking forward to having news from you soon, and I wish you had a good time in New York. Mm -hmm. Is it right? Um, it's not right. Nope. Oh, uh, then it's. I'm looking forward to having news from you soon, and I hope you have a good time in New York. Yeah. So why is it hope and not wish? Then let's think about why that wasn't right. Uh, cause, yeah, it's in the future, like. Going to That's right. Yep. Yeah. And you're being optimistic about the future. I hope you have a good time in New York. Yep. Good. Well done, Eugene. Uh, Jashria, number five, please. My neighbor's children are always shouting. I wish they wouldn't be so noisy. It's correct. Good. Why is it correct? Uh, because she wishes... Um, um that would happen yeah and so she wants something to be different if you want something to be different then wish is correct isn't it good okay henry uh you done one no uh, number six please the performance was really good but i wish more people will come next time uh this sentence is correct you think it's did you say you think it's correct uh yes Okay, it does sound okay. It sounds less wrong than the other ones, but it is still wrong because we're talking about the future. So it should be hope because remember it says, ne notice how it says next time. And that, in that case, we're talking about the future. So I hope more people will come next time. Number seven, please. Um, Chong, back to you. I don't get many letters from you and I wish you'd write to me more often. Uh, I think it's correct. It is correct. Well done. Yeah, exactly. Because uh, you want something to be different. And finally, Henry. We wish you enjoy your stay at our hotel while you are here in Tokyo. Uh, this sentence is wrong. It's, it's wrong, well then. Yeah, why is it hope? Because uh, it's... Uh, because hope is used in sentences that are optimistic. That, that what, sorry, I'll be optimistic, yes. Okay, good, well done. Optimistic about the future, very good. So this time, for questions one to five, you're going to complete the second sentence that has a similar meaning. So you're used to this type of grammar question, I believe. Um, so don't change the word, and you have to use between two and five words, including the word given. So it's a pity I can't cook well. It's a pity, meaning it's a shame. It's sad that I can't cook well. So what would the sentence be? I wish... And it has to end in cook. Now this is quite a confusing one because this cook is, ver is a verb to cook. I can't cook well. I can't do something well, cook. This one is a noun to be a cook. Uh, 
So a cook, a person who does the cooking, a person, a noun. So what, how could we fill that in so that it's showing that I wish I something? So can I try? Yes, please go for it. I wish I was a better cook. Oh, wow. Well done. It's right. Well done. I wish I was a better cook. That is perfectly put there, Danny Ashri. Well done. So these these quite tricky. You could use the previous examples to help you to structure these ones. So again, have a go. Questions two to five, and then we'll go through them together. You can ask me any questions in the meantime, though. Good. Okay, so don't worry if you haven't quite finished. Um, you can listen along. So Chong, number two, please. Um, if only I had studied harder when I was at school. Good. Well done. If only I had studied. Very good. Or I'd studied is fine as well. Number three, please, Danny Ashri. I wish the neighbours would make less noise. Good. I wish the neighbours would make less noise. Good. Um, you can also have um, would not make so much noise. Sorry. Uh, yeah, would not make so much noise. Did anybody have any, any alternatives? Might be wouldn't. correct. Let's check. I wish the neighbours wouldn't wouldn't make so much noise wouldn't make so much noise yep yeah, that's fine uh so keep going then um eugene uh number four please if only they have call off the match um not if only they had called off the match it's a pity they cancelled the match. This person is, if it's a pity, what a pity, what a shame, how sad. Yeah. So it's not if only they had called off the match. They didn't want them to call off the match. Call on? Um, no, so you would say if only they hadn't, that's all you need to put, it's just had not or hadn't rather than oh, had. Oh, okay. Ha if only they hadn't called off the match okay i understand all right great and then number five please henry i wish you had met my brother i wish you had met my brother well done i wish you had met my brother or i wish you'd met my brother i wish You'd miss my uh, met my brother. Sorry, wish you had met. We uh, need to add that in. Met. Great. All right. Well, you've all shown a really good understanding of using hope and wish and uh, if only. Try and use them this week when you're doing things. Oh, if only I'd remembered my grammar rule from last lesson. Oh, if only I'd. Uh, I don't know. Finished my homework earlier. I could have watched this TV show. So we'll finish the lesson then with another reading exercise. So this time with the exam roundup, we're thinking about English part seven. So we're going to say whether it's true or false. And if so, if, if it's false, we're going to correct it. So Chong, read number one, please. Uh, in this part, there are 12 questions. Is that right in part seven? Yes. Mm, nope, there are 10. You don't have to do quite so many. Oh. So it's false, there are 10. Number two, please, Henry. Read it out, say if it's true or false. You have to match the question with different text or different parts of a text. Mm -hmm. Did you say it's true or false, Henry? 
is it true? True. Good. It is. You're right. Danny Astri, number three, please. You should read the text carefully before you read the questions. Uh, true? Uh, it is tr true, yes. Oh, hold on, that one is false actually. So actually, uh, you should read the questions first. Why, okay. should you read the, why should you read the questions first? So that you can identify the answer easily. Yeah, good. As you read, you know what you're looking for then, don't you? You kind of got a step ahead then. You can start trying to find it straight away. Uh, well done, Danny. Uh, sorry, Jashria, just, just can you do number um, four, please? You should underline the main ideas in the questions. Uh, true? True. Yeah, definitely. Underline them, get into the habit of doing that. And then finally, Lynn, number five, please. You can't find an answer with the gap blank. False. Good. What should you do? Move on to the other question first, then come back after. Yeah, but eventually you should try to answer all questions. So even if you're not completely sure, it's much better to put something than leave it blank, isn't it? You never know. If you have a really good guess, you might be right. So you might as well just go for it. But good idea, do that at the end once you've done all the ones you're confident about. So change those, everyone, if you need. Uh, so you should have, sorry, written that on yours as well. So you're going to read the newspaper article about people who have been attacked by animals. Um, and then you're going to be reading questions one to ten. Well, actually, you're going to read them first, aren't you? Um, so that you can then answer questions one to ten. So, um, have a read through now. Underline the main ideas for each question. Sorry, where's number one to ten? I've lost those now. Yeah. Okay, so once you've underlined the main parts of the question, you're going to be reading these extracts uh, from different people. So surviving an animal attack, no matter how well prepared you are as a traveler, animals can still attack you. Our advice, keep your distance. So we'll read co about Colin Bristow together. We'll match Colin Bristow to the, to the questions and then I'll leave you to do the rest. So, Lynn, can you read the first part of this uh, text, please? Off you go. I was working as a safari guide in Botswana with four American clients. There was a sudden movement to my left, and a changing elephant crashed through some small trees less than 20 feet away. I always breathe Good. my... Oh, um, stop there. Um, sorry. Well done. Keep going, please, Chong. I always brief my clients that you should never take your eyes off a dangerous animal or show signs of fear or panic. Keep going. I turned to face it and was immediately knocked over by one of the clients screaming run, run at the top of his voice. Stop there. Well done, Henry. Next, you can do to the end now, please, Henry. It's a bit longer. I landed on my back between the exposed roots of a large uh, sahia tree. My backpack tangled with one of the roots so that I couldn't move. The elephant was kneeling over me, smashing his thick trunk into the roots on either side of my body. Elephants have poor eyesight, and this may have been what saved me. I managed to free myself from my backpack and I went for my life, hardly daring to believe that the elephant wasn't chasing me. Good. Well done. Good reading between the three of you. Very good. Um, so it's a acacia tree, acacia tree. Um, 
so let's have a look at the questions then before we read any more. Can anybody spot which one from one to 10 is referring to Chris Haslam? So, oh, sorry, uh, not Chris Haslam, that's the next one. Colin Bristow, so A. Teacher, is it um, maybe give advice which was ignored? Uh, yes, very good. Gave advice which was ignored. Exactly. That one is A. Uh, because what advice was he given that he ignored? Um, he gave advice to um, not show signs of fear or panic. But, um, yeah. but the client uh, scream, screamed, run, run at the top of his voice. Yeah, good. Exactly. Well done. Um, so good. So he was ignored. Sorry, but his advice was ignored. Not not he ignored advice. Sorry. Uh, okay, there's one more that refers to A. Which one is it? So we know it's four. Is it number 10? It's number 10. Well done. It is very good. Uh, it was a, a surprise to eventually escape exactly because they didn't think they were going to. So uh, keep going. Read B by yourself, Chris Haslam, and you could do the same thing again. You might like to do it that way and think which ones are about B, or maybe you prefer reading all of them and then doing the questions. It's up to you. Or maybe you could do what we've just done after each one but then when you've read them all double check them because you might the danger of doing it this way this time I, you had me to saying yes that's definitely the right answer but you won't have that so you could do what you think it is then go through it all one more time but anyway we have hmm, we haven't got very long actually so maybe just do b think about which ones are for b and then you can finish this in the next lesson Okay, has anybody worked out already which ones might be related to B? I know you've not had all that much time, but we'll be bringing the lesson to an end in a moment. Any ideas before we finish there? Number one. Uh, number one, yes, good, well done. Is it, num it's number three, right? Mm, it's not number three, no. Good try though. Number five. Number five, good. Yes, it is. There's a few more. Number six. Uh, number six, yep, yeah, good. And then there is, so we've got one, five, six. One, five, six. There's one more. Eight. Eight. Very good. Well done. Brilliant. So we've still got C and D left to do next week. Um, let me take a little shot of that. Great. Um, so we'll finish there for today. Really good job. So just remember next week you're going to have a different um, tutor standing in because I can't, I can't do next week. Um, and then when I see you the week after on the 25th and the 1st of August, remember we've got our final mock exam. So you could be studying for that as well. Um, any questions before we go? Lovely. All right. Well, well done everyone for working so hard today. I've really enjoyed working with you a second time. It's been great. So enjoy your lesson next week and then I'll see you again the week after. All right. Have a good week, everyone. Or a good couple of weeks. See you soon. Bye bye. Thank you, teacher. Well done. Bye bye. Bye bye. Well done.